Hello guys, uh, welcome to the tutorial of Tetrain Substance Planner. Um, this particular tutorial is about painting some natural stuff like the ground. I have some water on it and I have some rock and other random stuff. If you look at the geometry, uh, it's actually very simple there. Uh, just zero metric geometry. All the geometry are created inside of ZBrush and uh, baked uh, using ZBrush too. Okay. So uh, um, let's start with the ground. So let's select the ground here, okay, and then create a new fill layer. Let's call it uh, ground base Sub substance pen uh, substance pen texturing is always fun because uh, it's actually. Uh, making things very easy to do uh, like uh, if you wanna some because you can do uh, the material instead of the, instead of just the texture and give you a very nice preview so let's go to the color and then uh, change uh, the color to a uh, brownish color like a mud or something okay all right and then it should be not shouldn't shouldn't be that shiny. So let's uh, drag out uh, drag up the roughness. But you still wanted to give it some reflection uh, because nothing is not reflective at all. Okay. Oh, for the lighting, we can give it a more realistic uh, lighting by go to viewer settings and change the environment map to something that does have color information. And also check on shadows to give it uh, a more realistic result. Okay. Uh, so we have ground base, but the dirt uh, or the ground shouldn't be just one color. Let me control C, control V to duplicate this layer. Let's call this new one brighter. Okay, this one I'm just gonna give it a brighter color. Uh, okay. And then, oh, and also change the color tune a little bit. All right, and then give it a black mask, and then you can use smart masks to give it some variation to start with, like dirt, dusty maybe on the mask because they're pretty random. All right, and you can tweak it by go there and change the uh, global contrast lower, and then balance to have more or less. Let's just have one thin layer of the uh, brighter dust and you can right click on the mask again and add paint. I always believe it's uh, always better to have some human uh, painted variation instead of, uh, instead of always rely on the, uh, uh, the computer generated result. So I'm going to find some high ground and then paint the bright color to enhance the volume. Uh, I do believe the uh, the color variation should be pretty random, so there is no uh, rules for where this should be. Uh, but you know, painting the color based on the uh, geometry variation is always good because it can enhance uh, the detail of the shape. All right. So that is uh, one more layer of variation. Okay. Now the water shouldn't be mud, right? Let's go create the water layer. Uh, a new fill layer, let's call this water. Okay, for water layer, uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, go change the color to something quite dark and then the roughness quite low because it's quite reflective. Uh, but you don't want it to turn it all the way down. You can look at the reflection there. Uh, let me make it a little blurry. Okay. And then some metallic. Uh, so give it more reflect uh, reflectivity. Okay. Uh, on the, uh, uh, the uh, because uh, you have more reflection when you look at from this angle and you have less reflection when you look at this angle. Uh, but dragging the metallic up can make that wrong, so it will be the same reflection on all the angles. Uh, 
but uh, I don't want that much either just a little okay and then it's it's not supposed to be happening anywhere so let's give it a oh before we do that let's also drag the hat down a little bit that will bring them down and then uh, transparency lower because the water is transparent okay let's right click and add a black mask here and then we can uh, go use some uh, brush to paint it back okay just drawing out where the water should be Uh, you can press X to re reverse your brush color. Okay. So for now, what I'm doing is masking out uh, where the water is. Uh, it doesn't have to be super organic yet. Uh, those are supposed to be uh, well print, so, you know, some kind of car. Uh, so I'm just gonna draw some lines in the middle to, you know, mimic that. Okay, let's mask it out first. Don't worry about too much of the blending yet. Here you can find the low ground, like that one here. And uh, here too. Uh, maybe somewhere here. is too big all right and then let's uh, blend them with the uh, the surroundings they're not supposed to be really that uh, crisp clear the edges uh, should be blending so let's uh, select some other brushes like this mode brush and let's press X to reverse the, the uh, mask and then just blend it back uh, like that way. Okay. You can also uh, use a white mask to blend some of the mud in the middle. Okay. All right. Some things in the middle could be like half inside the water or they're just wet. So I'm uh, just gonna draw some uh, subtle strokes on them. Just blending those uh, with uh, the surrounding mud. I can choose a soft brush here and then um, lower down the the flow so it's really subtle and you can paint the edge white uh, 
okay because they're supposed to be white because uh, they're close to the water anyway it's trying to mimic reality here okay all right now of course oh here I haven't done anything here yet <laughs> Have some uh, uh, let me use my mode brush again of course uh, you can do some more on the low ground uh, maybe uh, here I think I have some uh, low ground here. Just uh, put some wet uh, water there. crazy about refining their distribution here but I'm gonna stop here uh, it's up to you to refine it all right good enough let's move on to some more detailing on the ground uh, one of the things I want to have is some um, because it's kind of wet right so it would be better to it would be better to have some uh, mud oh so, sorry <laughs> some moss on it uh, so let's go to the uh, a substance share by clicking that button and then log in, you can create a free account. And then let's search for most and then let's uh, go, uh, I think I used this one. Yeah, it's called bright most, not quite this one actually, but let's try this. Uh, the one I used earlier is this one. I think the color is closer. Uh, let's try this one. I think this one is better because this color is a warmer color, more like my ground color, so they're more consistent. Uh, okay. And then let's drag this one, the SPSAR, to the shelf. And the uh, substance panel will bring up the import resource dialog window, and you what you want to change the uh, uh, the type to base material, and then the import to you can choose project import. Uh, that way you can look that into uh, instead of project. Okay, and then you can drag it on top of the ground but below water. Okay, and they're really crazy here. I don't want it to be anywhere. Right click on it and give it a black mask. And then I can manually uh, define where it is uh, here on the, by painting the mask myself. Uh, I'm still, I think I'm looking for high ground to give it some moss. Uh, maybe some more moss around the rocks here. Uh, of course, you can use smart mask to do that for you if you are lazy, but I don't think that takes much time to do this one So I'm just gonna do it manually. I think manually created result is better than computer generated way because Computer generated uh, generated way has no accident and which is not truly natural uh, In reality, there is some accident uh, uh, but humans, the ways of hu human thinks, it's also kind of really easy to get computer-like result because you think in a straight way. So you want to, um, you know, 
when you're drawing or painting be a little loose okay all right but anyway i have those uh mosses here okay so that's one of the layers you can add uh, you can keep adding new layers um like um you can search for like um, any ground And then find people's uh, shard asset of the ground. I think uh, there's a lot of things you can go for. Maybe that one. <laughs> this one is quite interesting. It's a lot of branches on the top. You can do all those uh, nice results. There, those uh, are substance are created using a substance designer, which is, is a node-based uh, procedural texturing software. But we don't have that, so we cannot demonstrate how to do that though. Let's drag it into the project. It's also a base material. Okay, it's here. Let's drag it on top of the ground mouse. And some of the, uh, the smart materials are pretty expensive though. <laughs> so it's going to take a little while to calculate. And that's the calculation bar. All right. I don't want it to be anywhere either, so give it a black mask, and then uh, you can apply it somewhere. I don't want it to have too much of that, so maybe just around the rock, maybe. Some of the ground that is closer to water, I think that's where the the branches are. Okay. Don't really want it to be too much over there. On um, the entire uh, model, so I'm just gonna erase some of the things. All right. And anyway, you can go crazy on um, you know how much things you want to have on the ground. But for now, I think it's good enough for demonstration purpose. So let's move on to the rock. Uh, let's go to the rock by selecting the rock in the texture stat list. And then you can start with adding a new fill layer just like before. And let's call it rock base. I always start with creating my own base color because that makes my stat look more unique than you know other people. Because if we're all using the same asset, our result is going to be the same too. Okay. But anyway, uh, so I have a rock here. And let, let me give it a color. Uh, I don't want a red color actually. Some bluish, gray blue color. Okay. And it's not supposed to be that shiny. So drag up the uh, roughness. Okay. A little bit metallic. Duplicate the layer. Let's call this one uh, Rock Brother. Okay, and then this one will have brighter color, maybe a little bit colder. All right, and then I want to I want the brighter color to only appear on the edges. So give it a black mask. I can of course manually paint that, but that's gonna take forever. So I'm gonna use smart mask to help me. Uh, and you have one called the edge scratch. Drag that on the, uh, right on top of the black mask we created earlier. That will apply that uh, on the rock. Okay. Uh, let's select that weir and then uh, we can do some changes like the amount of the noises, the size of the noise, and then the level of weir you have. You can go crazy like a lot or very little. It's, all, it's your choice and the contrast of the weir. Okay. And then you can right click on the mask again and add a paint. That way you can uh, start painting some manually uh, created stuff. I can use this chalk brush and then can manually paint in some of the scratches uh, because computer generated ways are like what I mentioned before, no accidents, but uh, some cracks or scratches could happen here. Um, 
because uh, you know maybe some people fall on it and then scratch it a lot okay so you can manually print in some scratches yourself uh, some human touch is always better so texture is used one of the series of using texture is used to support your geometry volume so you can uh, draw a lot of scratches on the most prominent area to make it even stronger okay <laughs> and then one of the little problem of this rock and the ground is that they are not blending well here there is a sharp transition so i want to change that let me go back to the ground material and copy the four layers i used to create the ground okay copy that and then go back to the rock and then control V to paste those in control G to group them together and let's call it a uh, mud okay and then I don't I don't want it to be anywhere so let's right click on it and then give it a black mask and then we can apply a smart mask here using the ground dirt that will only have them on the ground, but they're not enough. So let's go select the smart mask and then uh, drag up the dirt hat. Okay. Uh, maybe more contrast is too high. Okay. I can, of course, manually create uh, manually fixing what's happening there by select the mask and then right click and create a uh, paint layer and uh, manually pin it uh, back here actually want it more All right that way they're blended better I think I want more uh, moss there. Let's let me uh, get rid of some of the root I created there, and then instead I want some uh, moss. So I'm just painting their individual masks now. To match with uh, the ground. Uh, you can always go back to the ground and tweak it too. To match them. Okay. Here. Let's give it more mud up here. Maybe lesser on the top. Uh, more moss here too okay just to match it with the ground here uh, all right that makes them uh, looks like blending uh, they're blending uh, better all right so uh, for the rock you can do after you have figured out the basic color you wanted to have, now you can apply something from you know other people or you know from other images. Uh, you can go to the substance chart and search for rock, and then you can choose any of the things you think fit uh, with your. But if you don't have any good ones here, you don't like any of the things. Okay, you can always go create your own. Uh, Uh, you can use all different ways, but I'm just, just gonna use just gonna use Quicksilver for me to, to help me. So I need a rock texture. Let's go to CG textures and then search for rock. Okay, and then maybe uh, the 
Let's see, oh, which one is better? I want some cracks like that. Maybe that one is good. Okay, so download it. And drag it into Photoshop. I'm gonna use Indu to help me convert that into a normal map. So follow to normal uh, presets. You can control shift U to make it a grayscale before you do that. Okay, then follow to normal and you can change uh, like maybe the crack one is good. Okay, and then it's not terrible, so check that off and then no edge bevel. Okay, active document that will actually convert that into a normal map. Uh, the, reason that, the reason I do that is because uh, I want to actually don't need those fun, smaller, noisy details. Okay, let's drag, oh, go back up. Drag those sliders down. That way I will only have the crack over there, which is what I need. Even cracks, maybe not that strong. Okay, it doesn't really have that much other variations. Okay, let's say this is good. And let's save it as a normal map. Okay. Uh, save it with a better naming. <laughs> okay, jetpack. And then let's call this a uh, rock normal. Okay. And then we can go drag the rock normal into the substance spinner. And then it's a texture now. And then let's put it underneath the project and import. Okay, now you can find it in the project called rock normal. And then you can go create a new fill layer above the rock brighter. Okay, but beneath the mud, let's call it uh, extra crop. Okay, now for the extra cracks, I don't want to change the color, the hat, roughness, metal, or normal, but I only want the normal. Okay, and drag the rock normal on the normal. Okay, that will apply that extra smaller cracks on the uh, rock to give it more detail. Okay, so you can of course um, create custom maps using all the ways. You can also try Crazy Bump, which is uh, another way. Uh, to convert any image into a normal map, but I do encourage you to do that first before you drag it in because if you just drag it in, let's try that. If we just use the image here, okay, uh, let's disable this one by use a hat map instead and then use that as hat map. It may give you a very noisy result, which is really hard to resolve uh, even you lower down the. Uh, a bit still kind of noisy actually this one is not bad because I, I'm choosing a one that is not having that much noisy stuff but a normal map is always better so let me control Z go back and then have the normal map okay all right and uh, yeah you can have more variations on it by you know adding more stuff like you can control C control V uh, to duplicate the rock base and uh, for this new one I'm just gonna change it to rock dark colors and then for the dark colors I'm just gonna make the color darker okay and then for the dark colors I'm gonna use the uh, smart mask and maybe use the uh, gravity um, or maybe this uh, dust soft as a smart mask there. Okay, and drag it up to you know give it more variation on the color wise. Uh, you can also um, blur it a little bit. And I want it to be happening on the crevices, so I can click on the global invert to invert it. Okay. Take the global contrast. Uh, 
or balance okay <laughs> uh, oh you can also apply some other masks on it too uh, so let's give it a maybe the the concave occlusion one is good <laughs> the drag it on top that will apply a new one on it okay uh, let's change the um, them to multiply I will multiply it uh, on it okay and for this one let's uh, change the balance to oh you know what I, I applied it on the mahal instead <laughs> which is not bad actually uh, but uh, that's it. if that's the, the way then let's use um, not multiply but uh, linear dodge It's okay, add. So have the crevices to have some mud. Uh, uh, we cannot copy it. Looks like let's uh, drag a new one to the extra uh, to the uh, rock dark green one there. Okay, and then let's use uh, multiply. Okay, because I want to like make them affecting each other. Okay, so I have more at the uh, crevices. Okay, all right. So you can go crazy on how much detail you want to have or variation you want to have on the rock. Like you can add paint, but I think that's uh, I leave that for you to refine it. Uh, okay, so that's it. That's the rock. I don't really recommend on using too much of you know the ones from the uh, substance chart because if everyone is using that then you will end up with a very similar result okay so that's that that's the rock let's moving on to other stuff um, for the shelled uh, I reason, the reason I created this one is um, uh, I want to demonstrate the uh, smart uh, of, uh, polygon feel functionality here so I want the uh, those uh, the outside edge and the, those, those two circles to be metal, but uh, the other areas are wood. So let's go to Smart um, Materials and then drag in a steel stand here. Okay, see the uh, the color variation is not really that nice. That's because <laughs> If you select uh, the texture settings, I don't have any color, uh, any texture information here. You need to bake the texture and then bake that. Uh, since like the rock and the ground, I already baked those things. Just make sure that you bake stuff. Uh, uh, bake the textures before you apply smart material because they rely on those. Uh, you see, after baking, it's giving me a much uh, reasonable result. Okay. Now for the middle part, I want it to be uh, the wood so uh, let's go back to shelf and then drag uh, the wood on top and then give it a black mask okay and let's use uh, the polygon fill and use UV and then you see I intentionally separated the UV <laughs> so you can just go grab those two and that's gonna fill those ones uh, as wood okay that's it uh, if you want to have more variation, might be uh, like you want to have some painted layer on top of the metal. Uh, you can select the metal layer and then create a new fill layer on top of it. Let's call it a uh, paint. Okay, and then you can give it a uh, paint color, maybe this kind of color. And uh, other things uh, is uh, the roughness. You can make it a bit rougher than the metal but still kind of shinier okay and then you can uh, make the hat higher okay let's right click and give it a black mask and then you can uh, paint the paint uh, back I think the hat is too high let's lower down that and you can uh, use a smart mask for you to do that. Uh, one of the things you can do is go add 
the strong and drag it there. That will only have that appears on the edge, but what you want is the reversed. So select the uh, uh, the generator and then click on the off to invert it. That way you have that only on the edge. Okay. Now let's change the global balance to give it some more variation on it. Okay. I think it would be better to use that one actually because it does have more information. But uh, you can of course uh, go right click on the mask and add a paint layer, and you can manually paint in the scratches. Uh, uh, let me use the chalk. All right, some of the scratches on the pins. I think hand painted way has its benefits because uh, you can really give it unique characteristics. That's the scratches, okay. And that's for the uh, shield. Let's move on to this one, which is this plate. Uh, let's start with uh, a smart material again. Let's use the wood here, the brighter one maybe. Uh, for this one, I want to demonstrate uh, the way of using alpha. Okay, so I want some uh, painted uh, you know, symbol on it. And uh, let's go search for uh, the Last of Us butter, uh, not the butterfly, <laughs> firefly symbol. Okay, just to play with it, uh, like that one. Okay. Uh, let's save image uh, to downloads maybe, and go back to Photoshop, and open that and control i to invert it okay and then let's save it as a uh, actually a photoshop file let's call it a uh, uh, firefly symbol the reason i revert it uh, is because the white color is actually non-transparent the black is transparent all right when that is done, you can go to the uh, downloads and drag it in, which is this one. And it's going to be recognized as the alpha. And then let me put it put that underneath this project too. It's here. Let's click on it. Uh, oh, let's go create a new field here. Let's call it uh, paint. It's going to be really bright. It's not shiny at all. Okay, and it's higher. All right, uh, let's go uh, give it a black mask. And then uh, let's click on that to use that as your mask. And then you can hold it down control and the left mouse button up and down to rotate it. And uh, if you use your mouse to click on it, it's gonna print it. But you see it's printing in the wrong place, right? It's not where we position the the mouse. That's because uh, the brush settings have the jittering, size jitter, and the position jitter, and angle jitter. Let's turn that off. That way you can print it directly there. Okay, so that's how you print something uh, on the surface. Uh, can go to the uh, brushes and then use uh, any brush to give it some more imperfections like uh, you know 
make it transparent on some of the areas so it's not like perfect there all right that's it so that's that for the class I'm just creating that to make it look complicated uh, let's just give it a random close uh, fabric oh now there actually let's go to the class uh, here and drag it in okay and for the class you can do something like uh, maybe the top area is gonna be brighter okay so what you can do is create a new fill layer but this fill layer what you want to do is you don't want to do roughness metal normal or hat but you want to do the color but for the color you want to change the blend mode to maybe uh, screen that will make it brighter right and also uh, just give it a color variation maybe a bluish color okay a color color and that way you're using this layer to actually make it brighter let's right click on it and change that uh, give it a black mask and then you can uh, you know have some brighter color on the top area of the, the glass uh, let's change the transparency so it's subtler than the the ones I have earlier all right that way uh, you're adding some manually creating created detail on the uh, class instead of its original uh, just the smart material because everyone is using that you have to make changes to make yours unique okay so let's say this is all good now everything is there we have the mud ground the mouse and then the uh, some of the water and stuff okay it's pretty complete now uh, you can go to the render here that's the array render it is using and you can see how the uh, how a detail render looks like here okay but uh, we're not actually wanting to be just seeing it in substance painter we wanted to uh, bring it into game engine okay so let's see how we can do that um, let's go back uh, here um, different game engine uh, needs different uh, textures so that's why when you go file export textures it will ask you for presets okay and there are a whole lot of presets uh, so the one there's even one for sketchfab okay well the one we want to go for uh, is unity 5 a standard metallic because that's the one uh, unity you use in the default settings you can change the format um, anything uh, have a RFR should be good you can use Targa because it's pretty common uh, and then other things like the size you can use document size or you can change that to even 4k or 8k which is experimental let's use 2k for performance for uh, performance uh, issues okay and that's where you put it so click on there and let's go um, uh, let's just do that in the downloads new folder let's call it unity textures Okay, select folder and then export that's gonna export uh, the textures for every object so you got a lot of textures let's open unity and then see how we can apply that start with a new project if you go to the forum Uh, and then it's advanced at level D. Then we have the PBR asset. I also shard uh, the uh, uh, the model here to you. Okay, let's download it. It's an FBX, so you can just drag it into the uh, Unity. Unfortunately, you cannot export model directly from Substance Spinner. The only way I know you can sort of is is the uh, the Sketchfab preset because you know if you're uploading your file to sketchfab you need the model anyways so there will be something inside of the zip file you created which have the model okay that's the only way you can do that all right now we have the model imported in it looks like this okay we have the materials without the materials assigned 
uh, you have to name them correctly in Maya, and that's uh, and that's how they are appeared here. Okay. Uh, let's go to the textures we exported. We can drag the entire texture folder into Unity. That will import everything, including the folder. So it will create a folder named Unity Textures and pull out the texture inside of the texture folder here. Okay. So let's assign materials uh, for the ground here. Uh, let's open the ground material and then assign the textures. That's the Albedo, which is the default, uh, the diffuse color. Okay, let's also drag in the uh, this one. This is the uh, ground uh, metallic. Okay, if you drag it in, you see it's uh, accurately reflecting. Uh, you know the reflection we defined in uh, Substance Spinner. Okay, uh, now it doesn't have buffness yet, so let's drag in the normal map onto the uh, normal map. Okay. And it appears to be something ugly. And that's because the normal map is not considered as a normal map here yet. So just fix now, and that will make it uh, all correct. Now you see the result here. It's really close to what we're having in uh, Steps and Spinner. Uh, it's just because the lighting is slightly different. But the roughness and everything is quite close to what Steps and Spinner gives you, which is pretty nice. Uh, the reason uh, for that is because they're all using PBR material. Okay, uh, that's why you're getting very similar results because they're using the same standard. But if you're doing that for renderers like uh, Viri or Arnold, you'll get you cannot get the same result. The reason for that is uh, those renderers are using a more complicated ways, so they're not PBR. Uh, what PBR is does is that PBR material never violates physics. If you look at uh, the any material, see it has only based uh, uh, roughness and metallic and the base color, and based on that it calculates the weighting of diffuse and reflection. So everything is accurate, no matter how you change those values. Uh, they are always. Uh, fitting with uh, the reality. Uh, uh, but in renders like Arnold or Berry, they give you flexibility to actually violate physics. So you can control the weighting of diffuse reflection to whatever way you want. And they separate those things. So that means you have to define those things uh, in a correct way to get realistic results. And uh, those maps here never is enough for those. So uh, yeah, you know, it's it's not PBR, so the standard is different. It's really hard to get the same result. But maybe someday they can fix it. But for now, no, there's no perfect way of doing that. So you have to tweak. But anyway, for game engine though, uh, they're pretty much the same. So that's why you're getting a very similar result. So that's for Unity. Okay. Uh, if you want to use uh, Unreal Engine, you can also do that. So let's go to Unreal Engine. Uh, and launch it. Am I launching it? <laughs> it's been a while since I launched it last time, so it's gonna a little bit slow. Okay, so uh, let's go create a new project. So you can use Blueprint instead of C++, and you can use any way uh, you want. Let's use uh, the uh, third person way, because it has a nice scene instead of it. Our engine is a much bigger engine, and it's slow, uh, more complicated. Uh, it has like a double-sided blade. Uh, it's more complicated, so you have more control, but you have to control more to make it work. All right.
So uh, let's also drag in our model, which is mm, this one. Oh, let's import it instead, not dragging it. Uh, so file import into level, okay. And then go to downloads model, okay. And it will ask you where to put it. Let's select geometry and then meshes and create a new folder. Let's call it um, uh, my scene. And then okay. And then we will bring up the import settings. Uh, you can use the default setting for now. Okay, import. And it will create a blueprint for everything. A blueprint is more like a, a like a prefab in Unity. Okay. Uh, you can after that you can save out to save it. Okay. It's imported into the scene already. Okay, let's look at it. <laughs> it's not big enough. Size wrong. Let's drag it. It's too big. It's probably the right size. All right. Now we have all the material and uh, the geometry and the raw FBX data here. Let's also go export textures for Unreal Engine. Uh, this time, just look for uh, Unreal Engine 4, okay, and then uh, let's create a new folder called UE4 Textures Export. Okay, so we got another set of textures. Let's drag that entire texture. Oh, before we do that. Uh, Let's create a folder for it first, because <laughs> it doesn't do that creating folder thing Unity does for you. <laughs> Let's call this uh, textures, and then we import it here uh, by dragging the UE4 textures folder into this content browser underneath the new folder we created, and that will import all the textures. Okay, let's save up. Okay, let's double click on the ground. Uh, that will allow you to select the ground instead of its uh, blueprint. And you see that's the ground material. Mm. And then uh, you can double click on it to open the uh, material editor. Just like the material editor in Maya is node based. Okay, so it's much more flexible than what Unity can do. Let's delete that texture and then drag in the images. That's the, the albedo, that's the normal map. And that is the uh, weird one. Um, it's weird because if you hover your mouse, or your mouse here, the name is Occlusion Roughness and Metallic. What it does is the red channel is Occlusion, the green channel is Roughness, the blue channel is Metallic. So uh, let's connect the, the, the images. So the color goes to base and then the normal goes to normal those are easy and then the uh, this one you have to connect the red to ambient occlusion the green to roughness and then the blue to metallic okay and then apply and save it okay all right they're getting pretty similar result too here in our engine all right so that is it uh, that is how you import uh, textures and material into game engine. Now one of the things you can do differently in Unreal Engine is that sometimes if you really compare it <coughs> carefully it's actually pretty close uh, the reflectance here. I think it's, it's actually accurate uh, but if it's not uh, you can select uh, this map here Okay, and then uncheck sRGB. That will give you a more raw information instead. See on and off is slightly different. And then uh, save it. That will make it um, uh, to read the, the raw information. But uh, because of that, uh, you have to, there will be an arrow here. <laughs> okay. So you have to re-import that image. But I've, I think it's, they fixed that problem now. 
So it's not doing that anymore, which is good. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's how you uh, import uh, detectors into Unreal Engine. Uh, they're pretty similar, but you can see Unreal Engine is a more complicated uh, render. It requires more step to set things up. Um, but yeah, that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.